So I saw an Andre Carpathia retweet today that caught my attention. It's a tweet from Cognition Labs introducing this AI called Devon, which purports itself to be the first AI software engineer. Uh, in a hands-on demo with Bloomberg's Ashley Vance, they were able to create a basic Pong game in under 20 minutes with this, with Devon. Now, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Josh Olin, and I created the actual world's first AI engineer that's fully autonomous and can build you games, can build you projects, can build you websites, simulations, whatever you want with absolutely no code and just natural language prompts. My first version of this released 10 months ago, and I've been posting about this relentlessly ever since. So when I noticed that Cognition Labs tweet about Devon had over 3 million views in just a span of four hours, mind you, I gotta admit, it really irked me. I looked over at their account and they've got just a total of 25 posts, their entire history, and their very first posts were just four hours ago when they started to promote Devon. And this maddens me because here's our page with hundreds of posts over the last 10 months, dozens of use case videos where we've demonstrated our pioneering work in this exact field and gotten fractions of the views. Now, just to drive the point home here, and, and again, I'm perplexed as to why our content hadn't gotten the kind of visibility that this post today has gotten, um, because our system can do a lot more than what Devin can do. Um, we do complete version control, so um, we actually like stage changes, preview the commits, commit them to disk. We can revert changes if your LLM ends up breaking something in the code that it builds. All of the specifications that it writes for you just based on your natural language prompt instructions and also all of the deployments that it makes are to these web-based playgrounds that it will just provide you a link so you can click and play test whatever it is you're building directly from chat. So there's no downloads needed, no installations needed, no configurations needed, and no additional signups because we've actually deployed this interface directly through the chat GPT plus custom GPT store interface, making it as absolutely seamless a transition as possible for people to play around with and, and, tr and try it out. So considering the incredible reception that Devin seems to be getting for their 20 minute Pong video, I'm going to do the same demonstration in under 10 minutes. And mind you, this is using a tool that's live right now that you can try in the ChatGPT custom GPT store to search for WebGPT. So you see what we did so far is we created a blank canvas, which I looked at, and then it just did a three-step process for its initial build out, where it talked to some back-end AI engineer agents that helped to double check the front-end engineers in ChatGPT's LLM. And along the way, it just spits out these preview links where you can try it out. And so far, we just have the animated ball with nothing that's interactable. And you can see with the next steps, they all am openly acknowledged that, that it has yet to implement any of the touch controls, any of the scoring system, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So since the AI agent told me that it has next steps it'd like to continue to, I just tell it to keep me posted. And that's exactly what it's going to do here. Now, not for nothing, but worth pointing out, uh, I am building this entirely on my iPhone right now. So I'm just on a mobile device and I'm building a game. So it indicated that on this step, it was going to implement in the touch controls. So we can actually have the player inputs and move the paddle around, as well as the AI paddle should be moving now on the other side of the page. And after clicking the link to play test this build, that's exactly the way this one behaves. Now there are some uh, inaccuracies and imperfections here in so far as when I swipe and move my paddle, it's also scrolling the page, which is pretty annoying. So I'm going to give this feedback directly to my LLM. Now, while I'm providing this feedback and while it's taking this next step, let me explain a little bit about some of the decision making around how we've engineered this system to work like this. We believe that the right implementation of a fully autonomous AI system is to not truly be fully autonomous. A, the correct level of AI and human interoperability, in, interplay, interactivity is, is what's really going to be creating the most powerful, truly AGI-like systems. So that's why we've designed WebGPT to include the human being in at certain intervals along the way, to, to not try to one-shot an entire system, but to iteratively build out the system in core milestones, kind of the way that a human might approach the problem. And what we find is that the actual user experience of the system to be very, very pleasing, very compelling. So this version of the game, it fixes the scrolling, the player, the page scrolling issue, and it also introduces the scores onto the top, uh, top left and top right corner of the screen. So let's try it out. Yep, I can confirm page is no longer scrolling. I'm the left paddle, the AI is the right paddle. Now, you probably noticed that there was no collision on the paddles. The ball was flying right through both the player paddle and the computer player paddle. So I need to give this feedback to the LLM and have it take another stab at this. Uh, I noticed a typo here. This is supposed to say incrementing. 
but that's okay. The LLM is gonna figure out what I meant. Another thing worth noting is that I'm playing this back at 1x speed. The only thing I'm fast forwarding are my typing inputs. So on this version, it's important to underscore that AI is not perfect, and neither are human beings, by the way. So this time it introduced a runtime error. But fortunately, we're using the GPT-4 vision model that powers the front end of WebGPT. So I'm able to just take a screenshot and attach it without any instructions, any additional language instructions. And it's gonna read the fact that there's a runtime error. It's gonna check the error logs, and then it's gonna read the error and understand and debug the problem. All of this happening autonomously with no copy pasting from the human, no additional human input whatsoever. And now it's gonna move and actually implement a fix that's directly related to the error that was encountered that was causing that runtime error. That's where all these little purple action check marks are. That's, that, that's the LLM going to an external resource that's doing all of that coding, finalization, writing to disk, and deploying to that web environment that you're seeing. And that's all hosted and managed in the cloud, on the edge. Just absolutely no user interaction or installation or configuration needed. So that should just about do it. With that last iteration, it should have reorganized our code and eliminated that runtime error. The playground should load just fine. And sure enough, it does. And I'm able, to, I'm able to move my paddle. The ball collides with both paddles now. Both scores are incrementing. And granted, it is a pretty rudimentary enemy CPU opponent here. Um, but that's just a matter of how deep do I want to go with this. I could go back to the conversation and ask the LLM to improve the reaction time of the AI computer opponent and all sorts of things. I could add new features, new power-ups. This is the point of the iterative development process that you get with WebGPT.